Hello, welcome to this walkthrough on balanced trees. Today we will be covering two three trees and left leaning red black trees. The one thing that you should know about both of these data structures is that they kind of behave in the same way a binary search tree does, except that there are some special modifications. So in a two three tree, you can notice immediately, like right here, that you can have more than one item per node. In two three trees, you can have at most two items per node. Whenever you add an element to a 2-3 tree, you always go use binary search or uh, ordered search to find out which leaf node to insert it into. And then if the leaf node is full, then you have to split that leaf node up. All right. And one more thing that you have to keep in mind for 2-3 trees is that the number of children a particular node has is always one more than the number of items within that node. All right. So in this demo, we will talk about inserting 18, 12, and 13. All right. So first thing to do when we insert 18 is we find out, we do like binary search to find out where exactly it should actually go to. So we compare 18 with 8, right? We say, OK, is 18 greater than 8? It is, so we go down to its right child, and we look at 14, all right? And we say, okay, 18 versus 14, which one's bigger? 18's bigger, right? So we go down the right again. And then we know that this is a leaf, so we want to put 18 in there as well, all right? But notice here that this is breaking one of the rules, right? It says, right now what we have is three items within a node when the maximum number of items per node can only be two. So that means that we have to split this node up. And how we do that is we take the middle element right here, 16, and just shove it to its parent node. And then um, since its parent node will then have 14, or we'll have 14 and 16, there's two items in that node, right? So that means there has to be three children. So then 15 becomes its own child and 18 becomes its own child. And the real resulting tree of that looks something like this. So 8, 16, 14 or 8, 6, 14, 16, 3, 7, 10, 15, and 18. All right, so that is what our resulting tree looks like. All right, this is after we insert 18 into our B tree. And notice here that even though there are two items, so if we look at this node, even though there are two items within that node, we can still we still preserve like some sort of order such that if we ever wanted to find 15, how we would search for 15 is we would say, okay, 8 or 15 compared to 8, 15 is bigger, so we go down into the right node and then we compare 15 with the first item in it. And since 15 is greater than the first item, we compare 15 with the next item, which is 16. And 15 is smaller than 16, right? So we know that we have to go down this middle key to find 15. All right, cool. So the next thing that we want to do is find uh, or insert 12. So what that looks like is I'm going to draw the same tree over here. Or yeah, same tree, 8, 6, 3, 7, 10, 15, and then here is going to be 14, 16, and then I'm going to leave these three blank because I want to add one. I want to add 12 to one of those children. I haven't decided which one yet. But I can decide by following like the normal binary search or something similar to like normal binary search. So we compare 12 with 8 again, right? 12 is bigger than 8, so we go down to its right child, and then we compare 12 with 14. Since 12 is smaller than 14, we know that 12 must go into the leftmost child of this particular node right here. So we can just do that accordingly, and the way it should be is 10 and 12. Right, and we leave everything else untouched. So these are 15 and 18. Now what we want to do is we want to insert 13. All right, so let me just make a copy here. So we have eight, uh, six, three, seven, and then we have 14, 16. And since 13 is smaller than 14, we know that it will go into this node here, right? So this will be 10, 12, and 13. This will still be 15, and this will be 18. All 
Now notice here that this is bad. We don't like this because here we are violating our rule that says we can only have at most two items in a single node. So what do we have to do? We split it and send the middle one up, right? So that looks like this. So eight, six, three, seven, this left side isn't changed because we haven't added anything to it. But here we have now 12, 14, and 16, right? So 12 is from this node right here, or is that item right there. And then what we have here is this becomes 10, this becomes 13, there's a 15 here, make that look more like 13, and this becomes 18. But once again, what do we have here? This breaks the rule, right? Because we have two, or we have three items within this node. So once again, we have to recurse and send this node up. So what that looks like now is 8, 14, and this will be the root node. The left node is still 6, and it still has 3 and 7 as its children. But now the middle node becomes 12, right? Because this was to the left of the key that we sent up. So the middle node is 12, and then it still has its children 10 and 13. And then on the right side, we have 16, 15, and 18. All right. So note here that this is a valid B tree, right? Because every single node has less than or equal to two items in it. And every single node has one more child than the number of items in it. So for example, the root node right here has two items in it and it has three children, which is good. And then this node right here has one item in it and has two children, same for the other two nodes. And then leaves, because they are leaves, do not have any children. All right, so this is the valid, or this is the resulting two, three tree after you insert 18, 12, and 13 into our original tree. All right, cool. So the next thing to do is to convert the two, three tree into a left-leaning red, black tree. So before we do that, I think it would be helpful to explain what a left-leaning red, black tree is. First of all, so one thing, one important thing to note is that every two, three tree has a unique corresponding left-leaning red, black tree. And this is how we translate one into the other, or I guess how we translate two, three tree into a left-leaning red, black tree. So what we have are red links. Uh, let me change the color, uh, if I can figure that out. Where is red? That's red. All right. Red. All right. So red links means that it's a, uh, it's, yeah, it, red links mean that it's connected between two, two nodes or yeah, two items. If there's a red link between them implies that they belong in this same node in the corresponding two, three, three, right? So in our previous case, eight and 14 would be connected by a red link, right? And then there's also black links, right? Uh, black links, which just represent like normal connections. So what we can do is we can just convert this uh, two, three tree into a left-leaning red, black tree as follows. So for left-leaning red, black trees, they're called left-leaning because the red links are always on, oops, so they're called left-leaning red black trees because they're always, the red links are always on the left, right? And we can enforce that by always just taking like the bigger node. So whenever we have a big, or we have a node, a two, three tree node with two atoms in it, we always just say like, okay, the first or the, the smaller item is always going to be the left branch or the left child of the bigger item. So we can see that here. So 14 and then this becomes eight, all right? And then for normal links where there's just like one link or one item per node, we can, we just course, we just like write those with normal black links. So the eight has a six and the six has three and seven as its children and then here we like 
there's this weird thing where we have 12, right? Where does 12 go? It goes between 8 and 14. So in the left-leaning red block tree, where should that go? Well, if it's greater than 8, it has to be on the right side of 8. And since 8 is on the left side of 14, that means that the correct spot for 12 to go is actually right here. So this becomes 12. We can fill in 10 and 13. Right? And then same thing about 14. So since this is a binary tree, uh, 14's right child is 16. And then 15, we have its children 15 and 18. And then the link, like I said, between 14 and 8 is red because, uh, let's see, here we go. Because in the corresponding 2, 3 tree, these two belong to the same node. So this is the corresponding left leaning red black tree. Alright, so now that begs the question like, oh, if left leaning red black trees are supposed to be perfectly balanced all the time, well, this tree isn't perfectly balanced. How come you say it's a perfectly balanced left leaning red black tree? Well, the reason why is it's balanced in the sense that there will always be the same number of black links to go, you will always have to traverse the same number of black links to go from the root to any one of the leaves, right? So we don't count the red links. So for example, to go from 14 to 3, we cross 1 and 2 black links. What about on the right side? To go from 14 to 18, how many black links do we have to cross? 2 as well. So there, this is balanced because if you remember, the black links represent like a height difference of 1 within the corresponding 2, 3 tree. And 2, 3 trees are always balanced, right? So it makes sense that the number of black links to go from the root to any leaf always has to be the same number. Because it, the 2, 3 tree is perfectly balanced, therefore when you tr translate it into a left leaning red black tree, it also has to be perfectly balanced. Alright, and one more thing about left leaning red black trees. Notice that this is a binary search tree, right? So if we look at any node, everything to its left is less than or equal to it, and everything to its right is greater than equal is greater than or equal to it, right? So this is also a valid BST. Alright, so that is how you convert a this is how you insert items into a 2-3 tree as well as how to convert a 2-3 tree into a left lane red black tree. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your senior mentors or um, anyone else in CSM and we will help you clarify any misconceptions that you may have.